Jess, here's what I think happens. People get resin, they get hardener, they're starting to work on the stuff in their shop. And there's more chemistry involved here maybe than they're aware of. There's, there's more to mixing this stuff than just throwing it in a cup. We're not making an angel food cake here. We're mixing resin. We right? are. We're, we're definitely mixing resin. So I guess the very first number one most important thing is your shop temperature. Because the colder the resin is, the harder it's going to be to mix. Okay. And what, do you have a number there? Like don't work below? Don't work below 72 degrees optimally. And in addition to that, you need to have had your resin at that temperature for preferably 12, 18 hours well, ahead me, of yeah, time. It's going to take those a while to warm up. Yeah, they don't they don't like moving moving fast. So. All right. So um, ambient temperature, I mean, and that, boy, that's good to know. So optimal is 72. Can I still do this at 60? Am I going to be okay? You can still do it at 60, but I would recommend maybe grabbing like a heated blanket and cuddling your resin up in the heated blanket for, you know, just a quick 20, 30 minutes ahead okay. of time. All right. What about humidity? Humidity is a factor a little bit more so with a ratioed with a two to one or a five to one versus a tabletop, but it's not detrimental. If you can pour from Alaska to Florida, you just have to get your shop space dialed in. Okay. Um, so now these have only caps on them. These have pumps on them. And this is important. Yes. Using those correctly, right? So most manufacturers have a color-coded cap, but from experience, you do not want to switch these because then you have now sealed your entire cap keep, onto your bottle. Because there's going to be a little bit of liquid on the bottom of the resin that then goes on the hardener yep. one and vice versa. Okay, so that's a good lesson is get the caps back on the get right jar. Get the caps jar. back on the bottle. And then when we're, so we're going to talk about the cups, but let's hit on this. Because you were mentioning to me with these pumps, um, the manufacturer preset these to do what? So these ones are metered pumps. You can see slightly by the neck here. So one pump is still equal to one pump. You don't have to, they've, they've removed some of the calculations for you to make it a little bit more user friendly. Okay, so it's, um, when it says whatever, two to one, people need, we're going to keep coming back to read the directions. Read the directions. Because if this is a two to one, don't do two pumps, one pump. That's automatically coming from one pump, one pump. Absolutely. And most of the manufacturers nowadays have very detailed instructions on the way that you should be using the resin, whether it be a one to one or a two to one. And they all almost always offer these metered pumps for free with your first purchase. Well, and they're color coded. So the... This blue went on the bottle that had the blue cap on it that tells me this is the right meter pump for that application. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so then the cuppy cups are sitting here. Yep. Because the alternative, if you don't always use this, what's happening with these cups? So if you don't have access to a pump system or if you're using a one-to-one, -one, which usually doesn't come with a pump system, making sure that you're using cups that have measurements on them. These cups are great because they're designed for epoxy use. So if your epoxy dries inside of it, just roll the cup between your hand oh, after it's dry it's and the epoxy will pop right back sort out. Sort of. Yeah. So measuring cups are great. They've got the different ratios as well as ounces, milliliters. Okay, to help make sure you get the mix right. Help to get the mix right. All right, so that gets us to where by one vehicle or another, we have stuff in there. And then do I put like an egg beater in there and beat the heck out of that? Or what's what's the mixing procedure? So for smaller portions, definitely try and stick with a stir stick. A popsicle stick works great. Or if you need to do a larger quantity, that can get really tiring on the arm. You just want to keep it steady consistent. So what you can grab is a plastic paint stirrer. So they've got the flanges, the plastic flanges on them. And you can use that attached to your drill. But oh. here's the thing is that don't hammer down on your drill. You just want to do it in the rotation that you would naturally do it. It just helps make it a little bit easier, especially for me. I use okay. those quite frequently. And part of this is don't undermix because mm -hmm. then we don't actually mix, right? Yes. And what happens if they there's another the other extreme is overmixing, what goes wrong with that? So, undermixing means that you're going to have tacky and sticky resin and your project's not going to sit up. Overmixing, you could introduce a lot of bubbles, micro bubbles, which won't come out either with a torch or with a heat gun. And you could set up your resin too fast because it's oh. it just altered it so much. If you've mixed it for 15 minutes, now you've cut your pot life as well. 
So this is a cool thing. When we were mixing for other video stuff, Jess kept saying, put music on. I'm like, we have like two minutes till we go again. So your trick with the music is? So most resins require about three minutes mixing time. An average song is three minutes and 10 seconds to two minutes and 80 seconds. So it's a great indicator as you're sitting there humming along to the beat. I mix for three minutes, so I'm pretty safe. Listen, listen to a tune. Listen to a tune. And mix away. Um, all right. We have alcohol. We do. We have, why do we have denatured alcohol out? So if you wanted to clean your cups or your utensils right away, fill this cup with denatured alcohol, let it sit for an hour, clean right up. So as long as it's wet. As long as it's wet. That'll dissolve. Clean up right away. All right. You're a big fan of gloves. Gloves. Always have gloves. Never, ever play with epoxy resin without gloves. We are working in an extremely well-ventilated area right now. Otherwise, we would have a VOC mask on. But gloves, proper PPE is super important. Okay. Um, so follow directions. Yes. Mix correctly, not over or under. Yep. Listen to Imagine Dragons or someone while you're mixing. Always listen to a song while you're mixing. That's a good tip. Um, I think that, that temper shop temperature has got to be a really big deal. Top. Um, and then um, metered pumps, pumps or pour into the cup. Into a measured cup. Correctly. All right. Any other advice to make sure people get this chemistry right when they do their, their resin pours at home? I just really implore people to make sure that they've read the data sheets that come with the resin. So every manufacturer is different from one tabletop brand to the next. And riddle me this before we go away. Is there a shelf life on the unused stuff? Not that I've seen. I've had some resin that's been sitting there open remarkably because I found it in the back uh, a little over a year old and I just wrapped it up and it still worked beautifully. Okay. Okay. I would just make sure that your lids are super secure. Okay. And not by switching the cap lids and then yeah, finding out the hard way. Yeah, that would make them really way. secure. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a good way to waste a couple make them gallons. Make airtight for sure. <laughs> All right. Good tips and uh, very helpful to get people mixing it up.